Hi, welcome to demo of JSR 353, that is Java API for JSON processing in action. I am Jitendra Kotam Raju. I am the specification lead for the JSR. We have two demos in this screencast. The first demo is a standalone demo. So that is primarily accessing Twitter search results and it filters uh, some other tweets. The same Twitter search results are being processed using the streaming API and as well as object model API. That way we'll know the difference when to use the streaming API and when to use the object model API. Okay, so then we have the second demo. So that shows the JAXRS native support for the JSON processing. So we'll see like how JSON processing could be used in JAXRS applications. And we'll explain how the resources can take advantage of JSON processing. So in this demo, we are going to use Twitter search API and see how we can process the Twitter search results. So here we are searching for Java and we have bunch of Twitter results. So the Twitter search results basically come in a JSON array and they have a results, okay? And then they have each, each result is part of this results array, as you could see. And in the results, all we are interested in this demo is the from user, so that is the username, and, and what is the corresponding tweet the user tweeted. So these two information we want to grab from the Twitter search results. So let's see in the code how to accomplish that. Here is the code. So I have two files. The same Twitter search results could be processed using object model API or the streaming API. First take a look at the object model API. As we saw in the browser, how the Twitter search results look like. It's primarily a JSON object. And in the JSON object, we have the results array. And in this array, there is a object for each result. So, but all we are interested is in from user and the corresponding text, corresponding tweet. So once we have that information, we want to present that information as the user colon, the corresponding tweet, the user colon corresponding tweet, and they will be separated by just a, a line breakers, okay? So how to do this in using JSON processing API? So this demo primarily is just a standalone demo. It doesn't use any application servers. All it just uses is JSON API in the class path and just runs this particular uh, demo. First, we are opening the URL on line number 72. So that's a Twitter search API and we are searching for the Java keyword. So once the URL is available, we are creating a JSON reader out of the URL stream, as you could see on line number 74. And we are consuming all the Twitter search results into the JSON object. So we, we know that Twitter search results are coming as an JSON object. So once we have the JSON object, we are interested primarily is in the results. Okay, what are the results that contains the user and the tweet. So once we have the results, for each result in the results, so that for that we are using a get value as. So the get value as takes a JSON object and it knows that in this array, all the results are, 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 are the individual results are primarily a JSON object. So that's what we are using. For each individual result, we are trying to get here from user. As you could see, it's just a standard map method result.get and we are passing the name from user and we are printing that followed by a colon then we are trying to get the result uh, trying to get the tweet in that case the tweet is represented using the text so once again we are using the map method on the json object so result.get and um, by passing the name as text we are getting the corresponding tweet and we are printing it out so the primary 
goal of this particular example is how to use object model API to consume this Twitter search results. It consumes all the search results into JSON object and we are processing across the different tweets. Okay. So let's run this example, the Twitter object search. So we got some of the tweets. So as we said that the username and the corresponding tweet followed by a line breaker. So that's what we have been seeing bunch of uh, Twitter search results. As you could see, there are quite a few job postings in this Twitter search results. I think we consumed around 100 search results in this case. Okay. Let's Let's see the same thing, how to consume these search results using the streaming API. So for example, how to use the streaming API. And in this demo, we'll see that. Okay. So we have the URL. We'll open the same URL, what we opened in the object API. And we are creating a JSON parser out of it. JSON parser is a streaming parser. So in the streaming parser case, the application is in control how to advance this parser. So that's what this parser has next is being done. So it is advancing the parser to a different state. And it, at each state, there is a way to consume this, whatever the necessary information is required by the application that could be consumed at that parser state. So all we are interested is the from user state, basically a from user key, and what is the corresponding uh, value for that from user, and similarly, what is the tweet? So that's what we are interested. So when the state is key name, we are looking for the from user. And the state is when it's a name, key name, and we are looking for the, uh, the tweet. So once we know that it's a from user, we are trying to get what is the username here, and followed by the, we are printing that, and followed by a colon. Once we know that this is a text, we are getting the corresponding tweet. So see the the parser is in in the key name. Uh, basically, it's in the key name, right? So we, we uh, name value pair. So the name being the text and the value being the tweet. So we got the corresponding tweet and we are printing the tweet. So the advantage of the streaming parser over the object model API is here we are not storing anything in the memory. So the, there are a list of uh, parser events have been uh, consumed by the JSON parser and the application is in control in how to consume those uh, some of these events and how to get the corresponding data. Okay, so this is the primary advantage of uh, streaming API on top of uh, uh, streaming API over object model API. Especially for this application, I prefer streaming API since it's not storing anything inside the memory and the necessary information can be got from the parser. So let's uh, run this particular example. St stretch API and running this example. Okay. Let me see whether I ran the example or not. Oh, it's already ran, okay. you see the same kind of results what we have seen in when we use it with the object model API. So that's all for the demo one. So in this demo, we have seen how the Twitter search results can be uh, processed using the streaming API as well as the object model API. And we have seen where to use streaming API and where to use object model API. Let's go to the demo two. So in this example, we'll see how JSON processing can be used by a JAXRS application. So let's take a look at this application. It's a simple JAXRS application. And as you could see, it is extending, the demo application is extending a JAXRS application. And it is registering certain resources, like the parser resource, generator resource, and few other resources. And this, 
JSON generator is also configured with the pretty printing. As you could see that we are passing a special property, JSON generator dot pretty printing to configure the generator such a way that whenever we emit JSON, it will be pretty printed. So as you could see that it's a simple JSON application. Let's see what some of these resources are doing. For example, let's take a look at the object resource. So the object resource has a restful path at slash object. So whenever there is a request for slash object, this resource will be invoked. And whenever there is a HTTP get method is called, then this particular method would be invoked. And this produces media type application JSON. So that's why we are returning a JSON object. S since we have a native integration of JAXRS JSON processing API in JAXRS, the JAXRS runtime knows how to convert the JSON object into JSON textual representation. So this method primarily is returning a JSON object. How do we create a JSON object from scratch? We could use the corresponding builders. Since it's an object, we are using an object builder and we are adding the name value pairs. For example, first name and its corresponding value. Similarly, the last name and corresponding value, the age, which is uh, uh, a number. And it also has address and phone number. The address itself is an object structure. So we are creating one more object structure for the address and its uh, corresponding name value pairs. Uh, and the phone is a array structure and which contains uh, two other objects. So those are being created by the corresponding object builders. And that's all this, uh, this method is uh, doing. Similarly, we could also consume if there is a post request for this resource. We could also consume JSON and JAXRS runtime consumes the JSON, creates a JSON object and invokes this method using that JSON object. Similarly, we have a array resource that has the path at slash array. And here we are con producing JSON array using JSON array structure, JSON array object. And the JSON array is created similar to what we have seen in the previous example. Similarly, if there is a post request comes, JXRS runtime consumes that JSON array and creates a JSON array object and invokes this particular method. So let's take a look at some other resource, which is a parser resource. The parser resource is exactly the same thing like what we have seen in the standalone demo. So that is consuming the Twitter search results and shows those results as a text plane, shows those results as a text plane to the browser. So in this case, what we are doing is we are returning a streaming output whenever there is a request comes for this particular resource and this resource has a path at slash parser. And similar to what we have seen in the standalone demo using the streaming API, we are parsing the results. The only thing which we are doing here is we are creating a writer so that all these results could be written to the HTTP output stream, the whatever is the parser output stream. And that's where these results are getting printed instead of uh, printing to the system dot out. Okay, let's take a look at this uh, uh, demo in action. Let me start the application server here. The application server is getting started. Okay, and it also deployed our application. Let me show, for example, the array resource. As we know that array resource is located at slash array. So let's access that. As you could see that we received whatever we created for the array resource. If you see the resource, it's already pretty printed as you could see the source because we configured uh, in JAXRS 
with the pretty printing property. So let's uh, run the parser, parser resource. As you could see, we are seeing the username and the corresponding tweet. But this time, this is similar to what we have seen in the standalone demo. But only thing is here we are creating a RESTful service and accessing uh, those resources from the browser. It's exactly the same kind of uh, demo what we have seen in the standalone demo, except that we are accessing these results from the browser. Uh, similarly, yeah, it's, it's uh, similarly we have. Let's you can take a look at the object resource, and we are sending a get request. It's being received by the object resource, and object resource created a JSON object, and that is being what we have seen here, the corresponding JSON textual representation. So far, we have seen from the browser how to do the get request. For the post request, we require some kind of a plugin how to post certain data to these RESTful web services. So I have a small REST client here. So you could use, of course, whatever we have done on the browser, you could do that here. Or And also we could do the, you can also post certain JSON data to these RESTful web services. For example, let's do first, uh, the guest request which we have done from the browser so let me invoke this one as you could see we got the we are invoking the object resource using a get method we got the corresponding uh, json similarly if you invoke let's say array right using a get http get method we see the array representation from the array resource but we could also do the post. Let's do some post so that we can see whether we are really posting to those. Uh, so here we are adding a content type, which is application JSON. And let's send some array data. So here we are sending, let's say, two, three, four, for example, or one more value, for example, let's say three, four, five. So we are sending a JSON array to this array resource, which is located at this path slash array. So let's post this method. Yes, we got the empty response because our method just returns uh, void. So, but we could see this, we could see in the glassfish log that we actually received that data. As you could see that this is the data which we pass it to the error resource. And that is being printed to the system.output which is being captured in the glassfish log. Similarly, you can use uh, JSON structure as a return type as well as basically as a parameter type. When you don't know whether it's a JSON array or JSON object, but still you know that it's a JSON, you could consume that JSON or you can produce the JSON. So in this demo, we, are, we have primarily showed how JAXRS resources can use JSON processing API and uh, do the processing or transformation or filtering any of the JSON and communicate with uh, the RESTful clients like browsers. So in this demo, we have seen how JSON processing can be used in JAXRS applications as well as the written types in JAXRS resource methods. For more details and how to use these technologies, you can download Java E7. Thank you for coming and uh, listening to this screencast.